Antarctica's only hotel hosts just 300 guests per year, but it charges them almost $100,000 each for a one-week stay in the icy paradise. That seems like an oxymoron, icy paradise. This is White Desert, an Antarctic vacation destination that offers guests the luxury of drinking five-star cocktails poured over Jurassic-era ice. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. See what we did there? Those who can afford White Desert get to enjoy gourmet meals while staying in futuristic pods or luxurious solar-powered tents. Private jets get you to this one-of-a-kind campsite, which may be the world's most exclusive accommodation ever. Put on your parkas and let's find out why. If you have the cash to visit White Desert, the first step is hopping on a Gulfstream 550 from Cape Town and taking that private jet straight to the middle of the frozen landscape, where you'll touch down on a runway paved into 100,000-year-old sheets of ice. Founded in 2005, White Desert is the only hotel operator in Antarctica. However, its accommodations can't technically be called hotels. Strict environmental regulations mean that White Desert has to be made up of zero-impact, semi-permanent structures that can be broken down quickly, leaving no trace. So to build their version of an icy hotel, the company has created stylish and comfortable campsites that allow rich guests to go glamping among glaciers. These luxurious campsites offer guests that can afford a stay in Antarctica the most comfort they can expect to get from the inhospitable environment. Prices range from $14,500 for a single-day trip to the campsite via private jet to over $92,000 for an eight-day Antarctic experience. Responsible for the creation of the campsites are Robin and Patrick Woodhead, polar explorers and the founders of White Desert. While the camps offer luxury from five-star dining to warm, comfortable beds, Patrick makes it clear that White Desert is for the adventurous rich, not those who want to lay out on their yachts in Monaco. White Desert's first campsite is Richaway Camp. It's been completely redesigned four times since it opened more than a decade ago. It's made up of pods that lie alongside a massive frozen lake. The company's second camp is Wolf's Fang, located near the airstrip in a location that features 1,000-foot-tall rock formations. Currently, the two properties can handle just 300 total guests over the November to January summer season. But by developing the properties even more, the Woodheads hope to host a maximum of 600 guests per year. Let's take a closer look at the campsites that await White Desert's affluent vacationers. Once off the private jet, a six-wheel drive truck arrives to pick up guests and bring them to their campsite. If guests book a spot at Witchaway, they'll be driven out to these six round pods that look like they belong on Mars or maybe the moon. The location sleeps just 10 campers in total, and the pods are decked out with plenty of felt and fur. Guests can mix and mingle in the warm communal area, which features a lounge, library, and dining room. The fiberglass pods opened in 2012 and are powered by solar and wind energy. The campsite also includes a shower pod, a reception pod, and a kitchen pod. Notable guests include Prince Harry and former astronaut Buzz Aldrin. Wolf Fang is the slightly less luxurious camping destination, but just by a little. The campsite is made up of solar-heated tents that sleep a dozen explorers. The central lounge and dining area are meant to invoke the golden age of polar exploration. Tents are equipped with ensuite washrooms, and there are two warm shower rooms. Wolf's Fang is advertised as the more adventurous location, where guests get to rough it just a little bit more than they would at Witchaway. Since which away is more luxurious, you'll find packages here that start at around $8,000 more expensive than Wolf's Fang. The properties have plenty of things in common. Each features a comfortable dining room, fur-covered chairs, couches and beds. Guests are served high balls of top-shelf whiskey from a snow bar that's chilled with slow-melting Jurassic-era ice. Campers are also served gourmet six-course meals based on their personal preferences. All right, so that's where guests get to sleep in and dine while in Antarctica. But what can vacationers do for fun? Luckily, there's a long list of fun and frosty activities to be enjoyed. Stays at Wolf's Fang run upward of $52,000 for five-day trips. These rates include meals, drinks, transfers, and round-trip flights from Cape Town on that Gulfstream 5. They also include guided excursions like ice climbing, rock climbing, and hiking through neon blue ice tunnels. Witchaway's most expensive package is $92,000 for an eight-day trip that includes hanging out with over 6,000 penguins and visit to the lowest point of Earth in the South Pole. Itineraries for both camps overlap. For example, both can explore the South Pole and climb mountains rarely climbed by humans. Guests can even have picnics at the top of ice mountains with views seen by few people in the world. Some hikes are even completed under Antarctica's 
midnight sun. Adrenaline junkies can enjoy flying across a zip line over an ice lake or descending from the summit of a 300-foot high cliff. They get to take ski do tours or use fat bikes to traverse the icy environment. The most adventurous can even spend a night in a canvas tent to learn how they really survive in the ice and snow. There are plenty of educational archives as well. Guests can take advantage of daily ice safaris and learn the science and ice preservation of Antarctic research stations. To prepare for these incredibly cold activities, White Desert tells guests to pack as if they're going on an epic ski trip, but they'll also provide campers with additional layers to survive the harsh climate. As you can imagine, setting up Antarctic campsites is no easy task. Paying almost $100,000 to spend a week in the cold might seem like a pretty steep price, but prices have to be that high for White Desert to even have a hope of turning a profit. To create the campsites, the Woodheads had to figure out how to get running electric and plumbing lines to such isolated and cold places in the dead of winter, where sometimes there are zero hours of daylight. They also had to train staff in the art of building ice chests for food storage and how to safely drive tourists across a frozen landscape. According to Patrick Woodhead in his interview with Bloomberg, it's also incredibly expensive to get food to White Desert. For example, a single can of Coca-Cola cost as little as 71 cents in a New York grocery store, but in Antarctica, it can cost $38.62. That's because if any plane capable of carrying it all the way to Antarctica has to make the 8,000-mile trip. It's a 10-hour loop from Cape Town and back without refueling. This also limits the transit methods used in the icy climate to pretty much only Gulfstream 550s because of their incredible range. Woodhead says that trips made in error are very costly. If you make a mistake and launch a Gulfstream when the weather is marginal, you've just burned $120,000. Every single hour worth of fuel is like gold in Antarctica. The cost for a barrel rises from $100 in Cape Town to $800 at the Antarctic runway. White Desert runs a refueling station on the South Pole, but gas takes an entire month to arrive on special sleds with top speeds of six miles per hour. By the time they receive a barrel of fuel, the total price can rise to $5,000 per barrel. Sometimes the team can't even use planes to transport cargo, which is even more complicated. Things that can't fit in the plane require ice-breaking ships and giant cranes to hoist materials over gigantic ice shelves. All this transportation takes place under the watchful eye of sustainability authorities who make sure that the fragile landscape remains undisturbed. The day-to-day -day operating logistics of the camp aren't much easier. Staff has to melt snow, so guests will have water to shower, ration plane loads of produce stored in igloo freezers, and ship every bit of waste back to the mainland. When camping season is over, the camps are all taken down and stored, and then rebuilt next season. Fortunately, a thirst for extreme adventures is growing among the affluent. Like Patrick says, some of the world's richest are actually sick of vacationing on yachts in Monaco. They're ready to get their heart pumping, while White Desert has to go above and beyond to make an Antarctic vacation possible for just 300 people per year, the Woodheads hope their unique vacation idea will make all that work worth it. A third camp is in the works at White Desert, with a design that Woodhead describes as similar to Dr. E. Evil's Lair. Expected to be even more luxurious and unique than Witchaway Camp, this new location may cost well over $100,000 for a week-long getaway, further maximizing the profit of the unique icy retreat.